We've got some crunchy updates today. In an Aptera update video for the month of November 2023, Chris has revealed some key details as to the Aptera's progress so far, and we're going to be covering that in this video. Specifically, we've had a glimpse at the current stage of production, an estimated progress update for production status, as well as a production and delivery timeline, plus some small detail about the state of Aptera's funding. So, don't go anywhere. Hello and thanks for stopping by. To support the work we're doing, go ahead and like the video. Subscribe and click the bell notification feature so you never miss out on more informative content as this. So Chris starts off with a retrospect of last month's update on the Aptera status. If you remember, we learned that over 60% of the body structures for Aptera have been produced and validated. This month, the biggest and longest lid body part, the tub, has been completed at the CPC factory. It was their enormous press that weighed 5,000 tons that was used for this. Because it is such an important structural component, the rest of the vehicle is constructed from it. An enormous amount of success has been achieved by the CPC group, as this is one of the largest carbon fiber SEMC pieces that has ever been produced. Additionally, more than 100 metric tons of hardened steel are used in the production of this color. From last month's update, we know that there are eight key steps in the validation phase. First and foremost is the manufacturing of tools with a lengthy lead time for Aptera's Bink. Following this, the production and validation of components for Aptera's Bink will subsequently take place. Stamping dies and post-process tooling are currently being utilized in order to perform the process of stamping the body sections that are intended for production intent builds, also known as PI builds for short. It may be deduced from this that Aptera is making progress with the first and second steps of the validation phase. After all six of the primary components of Aptera's body have been finished and validated, they will be bonded together to form the full bink. After that, the entire structure will be tested once more to ensure that the body closures are within acceptable limits. So we also know the next process by CPC will be the CNC machining. Then after that, they will be doing the controlled assembly of this vehicle, so the bonding. It's not assembled mechanically, it's assembled by bonding like Formula One vehicles. That is a lot safer due to the fact that you have more surface to connect two components compared to just a welding that is on the perimeter of two components. This is something that they are doing already with all the different vehicles that they build. So across all kinds of different lines, CPC Group is using a very similar process, and this is just the result of all those years of experience culminating into one vehicle, and that's quite a relief knowing the Aptera is in experienced hands. Chris revealed that Steve is in Italy currently, and we got to see the first pressing of the tub of the new Aptera, with most of the structural pieces in place. Carbon fiber is being utilized particularly in current times when the lightweight is of utmost importance for the autonomy of the vehicle, as well as for the safety of a vehicle. Not only is it built entirely of carbon fiber, but it is also manufactured using a procedure that is a press, which is a forging process. This ensures that every component is similar to every other component during the production process. This is also friendly for scale and production. The materials used for Aptera's Bink is carbon fiber SEMC, which doesn't produce any scrap of raw material. This is very, very important for sustainability. Indeed, the process of recycling carbon fiber fibers is going to be the future of carbon fiber. How come? Mainly due to the fact that you are able to reconstitute them with fresh resins, Nevertheless, the fiber or the core of the material is preserved and recycled up to five times. Let's look at it from that perspective. So CPC Groups has succeeded to make the largest part of Aptera's bink and are assuring that their mold can produce one of such parts in 12 minutes. I think that is quite impressive. But let me know your thoughts in the comments if this amount of time is good for scale and production or if they need to make it more time efficient, given that they'll need to make six of such parts before assembly of the car. The molds produced by CPC are able to stamp the entire inner workings of the Aptera on, including seat spaces, cabling passages, places for high voltage cables, for low voltage cables, and so on, already molded into the tub. Things that bolt up to it simply go into the exact location without any trouble since everything is positioned and tooled and everything is in its proper place. Therefore, rather of needing to produce that for a significant number of stamped components, it is just one part. I think that's just simply brilliant engineering. Now, Chris went ahead to confirm something we have been speculating about for a while. The material for the solar panels. So he mentioned that their solar team in San Diego has been building production intent solar panels, and the material is being made of his glass. To showcase the lamination method, he demonstrated a solar hood for our Gamma vehicle. 
This panel produces 75 watts of power, and the proprietary glass it's made with has extreme scratch protection, an incredible finish, and exceptional impact resistance. The best part, the solar panels are whopping 40% lighter than before. We did a video a while back where we went over the solar panel advantages with glass and why Aptera's move to glass is a smart one. So be sure to check that video out, link in the description and card at the end of this video. Now let's talk funding, and this is great because Chris mentioned they now have less than 500 priority delivery slots left in the Accelerator program. This limited time opportunity allows Aptera fans to become co-owners of Aptera, accelerating the solar future and securing one of the first 2,000 Aptera vehicle delivery slots. The huge amount of capital expenditure that is necessary for production is one of the fundamental reasons why the majority of electric vehicle firms fail. EV firms, in contrast to conventional automobile manufacturers, are required to make substantial investments in research and development, production facilities, and battery technology. As an illustration, Rivian has single-handedly invested more than $10 billion in industrial facilities. Because of these large capital requirements, it is difficult for new and smaller businesses to compete with those that have already established themselves in the market. Chris also mentioned that they have several term sheets signed by excited potential investors to get them to the funding needed for high-volume production. Could this mean they found a big pockets investor to prove the funds for scale and production? Let us know what you think of this in the comments. Now let's talk about the production and delivery timeline. Chris added that their objective is to finish the first of many cars that are intended for manufacturing within the next few months. Their high-volume production plan is dependent upon acquiring an additional boost of funding. However, their plan is to finish the first production intent builds over the next few months and begin delivery by the end of 2024. This plan is contingent upon receiving the additional capital. But despite the delays of Aptera, Tesla is setting the pace. In spite of a number of setbacks and delays that lasted for four years, the Tesla Cybertruck has at long last arrived. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, held a delivery event at the company's facility in Austin, Texas, where he highlighted the vehicle's ability to tow, bulletproof doors, and straight-line speed. At the occasion, a number of clients received delivery of their Cybertrucks. However, unlocking the door proved to be a bit of a challenge. This occurred before the firm published updated information on its website regarding the specifications of the vehicle, as well as its price and other information. In the beginning, like Aptera, production was supposed to start in the latter half of 2021. However, this objective was pushed back due to supply chain shortages and manufacturing issues. For the time being, it is anticipated that the company will only produce a limited quantity while manufacturing continues to increase. It was this year when prototype versions of the Cybertruck began to appear for the first time, which fueled a frenzy surrounding the curiously formed and controversial vehicle. This could serve as a point of support for Aptera, showing fans that even amidst delays in production, the final results of the SEV will amaze. And we've come to the end of today's video. Be sure to also like, subscribe, and activate the notifications feature so you never miss out on more informative content as this. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.